The river in a park in Los Angeles is bubbling like boiling water. The black dog on the side of the road was also barking furiously. Then cracks began to appear on the road. A traffic policewoman fell into the sinkhole with the collapse of the road. Then a massive sinkhole appeared out of nowhere and expanded with great speed. It swallowed up everything around it. Eve, who was taking her children to school, couldn't even turn her car around in time. She could only drive the car backwards quickly, but they hit the car behind them and blocked the way. They had to abandon the car and follow the crowd to get away from the building that collapsed in front of them. Eve's son Josh was delayed in rescuing a little girl and fell into the sinkhole. Eve was devastated to see him, but he was soon swallowed by the massive sinkhole. Luckily, her daughter Izzy pulled her arm in time, but the sinkhole was still spreading. Eve in order not to drag Izzy so hard to let go of her hand. Eve just fell into the sinkhole. Eve's husband received a call from Izzy. Gavin rushed to the accident site. By this time, the rescuers had already arrived, but they all looked at the massive sinkhole and didn't know what to do. What's even more bizarre is that the sinkhole will also fly out of the massive flying birds. Scared the crowd back repeatedly. What is under this massive sinkhole? How can there be animals alive? Gavin on the side was shocked speechless when he saw it because he had seen such a strange bird. Gavin used to be a good pilot. He crashed in the desert three years ago and was forced to retire. After that, he often had hallucinations. Empty planes, massive rocks and strange birds of prey. The scene changes. Eve wakes up from a coma after falling into a sinkhole. She was in a trance and felt that she had fallen into a light. Her previous experience was like a dream. Eve wakes up with a start and finds herself on a plane. The green light in the sky was exactly the same as the one in her dream. Eve couldn't care less about that. She had to find her son Josh as soon as possible. She hadn't even noticed that her wedding ring had been left next to a boulder with blood red paw prints on it. Eve ran as fast as she could. She noticed a black smoke rising not far away. When she ran over to it, she was stunned by the sight. There were many survivors gathered here. Many vehicles and buildings that had fallen into the sinkhole were scattered all over the place. Fortunately, Josh was also here. Mother and son were finally reunited. The survivors started introducing themselves to each other. They all wanted to know what had just happened. What's puzzling is that the vehicles and buildings were badly damaged by the fall, but they fell through the sinkhole unharmed. They all speculated about the green light that came through. Sam, a former Navy SEAL, interrupted the discussion. He said that without knowing when they would be able to return, Gathering survival supplies was the most important thing, so everyone scattered. When Eve and Josh reached the edge of the woods, something terrible happened. This wolf's fur was black as ink. Its teeth were extraordinarily sharp. Even though it had no companions, it dared to charge at humans without hesitation. The mother and son turned and ran when they saw this scene. But another wolf appeared in front of them. The survivors were so scared that they scattered and fled. Soon, someone was pounced by the wolf and dragged into the woods. The remaining wolf gradually caught up with Eve and Josh. Josh was unfortunately bitten by the wolf. Eve couldn't even think about running at this point. She picked up a stone and tried to fight the wolf with her life. But then suddenly a shot rang out and killed the wolf. It turned out to be Ty who shot in time to help. Eve didn't have time to thank him but called out for help because Josh was seriously injured. Everyone came to help carry the wounded man to an abandoned bus. No one could have imagined the horror they would encounter when they fell into the giant sinkhole. Officials soon sent a woman named Nathan to be the person in charge of the sinkhole. She kept reassuring people in front of the camera. Unfortunately, they don't even know how deep the sinkhole is yet. They weren't going to send anyone to rescue it either. They're going to send a military drone down to check it out first. Gavin and Izzy were both desperate. They could only comfort each other and pray for Eve and Josh's safe return. Just then, Gavin was seeing visions again. This time he saw something different than before. He vaguely saw Eve and Josh on the plane. Once again, he was reminded of the strange flying birds he had seen before. Gavin guessed that every time he saw a vision, it was probably real. So he can't wait to talk to Nathan, the rescue commander. But he's only a civilian now. It's not easy for him to meet Nathan. At this moment, Nathan also found the green light and the sinkhole through the drone. Unfortunately, the drone lost its signal the moment it got close to the green light. This reminded her of a similar green light in the desert three years ago. So she immediately went back to report the incident. She happened to meet Gavin at the door who had been waiting for her. He told Nathan that there were still people alive at the bottom of the sinkhole. So officials need to send a rescue team down to the sinkhole as soon as possible. To add credibility to his words, Gavin also told Nathan that he had just seen the drone crash through a vision. Unfortunately, 
Nathan was only slightly surprised. She didn't pay much attention to what Gavin said, but that didn't stop Gavin from giving up. He immediately ran home and dug up all the previous photos because he always thought the boulder in the vision looked familiar. Izzy and his sister Para both thought he was crazy, but Gavin still didn't care. He finally spotted the strange boulder in a photo with Eve. He plans to go to the boulder's location to check it out. On the other side, Eve and the others trapped in the sinkhole were in a bad way. Josh miraculously survived the fall into the 10,000 meter sinkhole. But then he was bitten by a giant wolf that he had never seen before. In this environment with no doctors and no medicine, he probably won't survive. Sam, a former poster commando with some medical skills, tells Eve that they need to find antibiotics and tools to heal the wound. Eve suddenly remembers that an ambulance was passing by just before the sinkhole appeared. The ambulance must have fallen into the sinkhole too. So she decided to look around. The ambulance might have the right medicine inside. Sam didn't want her to go alone. So Sam and Eve teamed up and set out to find the medication. On the way, they met Ty who wanted to end his own life. Ty has no more courage to live. Eve saw this and went to persuade him. He finally gave up the idea of dying. Coincidentally, Ty said he had seen an ambulance before. So he immediately set out to take Eve and Sam to look for it. But it was a long way to go. It was getting dark. The three of them searched for a long time before they arrived at the ambulance. The ambulance had all kinds of medicine inside. But Eve did not feel happy because she felt that the mountains in the distance looked familiar. Isn't this the Rocky Mountains outside of Los Angeles? And just then, there was a movement in the jungle not far away. A strange looking tiger suddenly appeared. On the other hand, Eve's husband Gavin had arrived at the side of the boulder in the photo. He wanted to dig in the earth to see if he could find any useful clues. In the end, he found the ring Eve was wearing in a deep sinkhole. He didn't know what to make of it. But what is certain is that Eve and Josh must still be alive. Meanwhile, Nathan, the rescue commander, also found information about the giant bird that flew out of the sinkhole. Its name is Teratornis. It is an ancient creature that has been extinct from Eve's discovery of the Boulder Mountain in the sinkhole world and the ring that got in dug up next to the strange rock. The people who fell down the sinkhole as the ground caved in must have traveled through a time rift to some prehistoric period, although the couple was in the same place. But they were millions of years apart in time. The one that bit Josh was probably a dire wolf. It existed in North America to point 6 million years ago. It was the largest canid ever to exist. It's also the most ferocious canid. We basically know that the green light in the sky is a time rift. This is the Abertooth, which became extinct tens of thousands of years ago. It had a large mouth and long, thin fangs. It is known as one of the most ferocious land animals. It did not hesitate to lunge at humans, but it was too powerful to withstand the damage of steel bullets. The three humans were able to escape Abertooth temporarily by hiding under the cliff with the help of bullets. Eve looked at the green light in the sky and was confused. She couldn't figure out why they had encountered the legendary ancient beast here, although they have temporarily escaped Abertooth's pursuit. But no one knows if Abertooth is waiting in ambush nearby. Eve's bitten son couldn't afford to wait long, so she and Sam and Ty climbed out of the crack and headed for the camp in the night. As it turns out, Abertooth didn't get far. Sam is caught off guard when Abertooth pounces on him and falls into the cliff. Ty and Eve tried to escape, but they were soon stopped in their tracks. Abertooth immediately jumped up and lunged at them. The two survivors don't have time to think about who set the trap and leave the scene in a hurry. They make their way to the cliff to look for Sam. They had no intention of abandoning their teammates. Besides, Sam still had the backpack with the medicine on it. It wasn't until early the next morning they finally found Sam at the bottom of the cliff, down and out. His spine was so badly injured that he had trouble walking alone. Even Ty had to help him walk with difficulty. But Sam felt that walking this way was too slow and would probably delay Eve's son's treatment. So they decided to let Eve go first. Ty stayed behind to take care of Sam. Eve didn't refuse their suggestion to save her son. She grabbed her backpack and ran as fast as she could towards the camp. Just as Josh was in a coma and his life was in danger. Eve finally arrived. She immediately gave him a dose of antibiotics and then breathed a little bit of relief. At that moment, Riley, who had been taking care of Josh, learned that her father, Sam, had been injured and was furious that Eve had left Sam behind and ran away. Just as she was thinking about going into the wilderness to look for Sam, Tony came over and said he had found a shocking secret. Just a short time ago, a man was suddenly attacked by a giant ancient wolf. He was almost instantly defenseless. Then he was taken by the wolf. His daughter Veronica couldn't bear to see him die. 
and decided to go deep into the wilderness to find her father. The kind-hearted Tony saw this and immediately said he would go with her. Luckily, they were more fortunate this time. They didn't suffer any more attacks from wild animals along the way. Shortly afterwards, Tony spotted a herd of camels speeding across the plains. The camels were about to run into the asphalt lake ahead of them. Tony rushed to stop them and save the eight camels. It was a scene where Tony suddenly remembered something, but his thoughts were soon interrupted by Veronica as she spots her father's body not far away. What's puzzling is that the body was placed in the middle of a pile of strange stones. It looked like the scene of some kind of sacrificial ritual. Veronica didn't have time to think about what it was. She just wanted to get her father buried as soon as possible. Then they went back to the camp. That's when Tony remembered about the asphalt lake. He told Riley, this time last year, eight ancient camel bones were found in the La Brie asphalt sinkhole in Los Angeles. Experts identified the camel skulls by their carbon content and determined they were from 10, 0 BS, C. Tony just saved eight camels that should have been washed into the asphalt lake. The bones found in the La Brie tar sinkholes could be theirs. If his theory is correct, then they are now in the suburbs of Los Angeles in the year 10, 0 BS, C. Riley was surprised to hear, but she couldn't care less at this point. She was on her way to the plains to find her injured father. Just then she sees Sam returning to the camp with Ty and a strange man at his side. Riley rushed to hug him and cried with joy. Eve felt much better when she saw this scene. It turns out that just after Eve left, Ty helped Sam along alone. They were struggling more to walk. Ty took a break from walking and he kept coughing. Sam could see that Ty was sick, but Ty tried to deny it. It was about to get dark. Sam didn't ask him any more questions. He suggested that Ty should leave himself and go back to the camp alone. At that moment, there was a movement in the jungle not far away. A cold man appeared out of nowhere. Luckily, he wasn't a bad guy. With his help, they bring Sam back to the camp. The man's name was Lucas. Lucas said he woke up in the wilderness after falling from the sinkhole. After everyone had split up, police officers Mary Beth found Lucas alone. It turns out that she is Lucas' mother, but from the conversation between them, this mother and son seemed to have a lot of conflict. While they were carrying Sam into the bus to get some rest, Eve's son Josh also woke up. It looks like he's out of danger. Everything is looking up. Eve's husband, Kevin, wasn't giving up on the search outside the sinkhole. He saw on TV that paleontologists drive. Shen had identified the giant birds that flew out of the sinkhole as ancient creatures. They had previously found fossils of similar species in the La Brie Tar sinkholes. Gavin is holding his wife Eve's wedding ring and wondered if Eve, who had fallen into the sinkhole, might have been in that era. So he immediately approached Dry Shin and asked him to do a carbon test on the wedding ring so that he could identify the year when the ring was buried in the ground. If the ring is also from ancient times, then it would prove that Eve was also in that era. But before he could wait for the results, Gavin was approached by Homeland Security. He was taken to a secret base without knowing the truth. It was only when he saw Nathan, the commander in charge of the sinkhole rescue, pull out his wedding ring that it dawned on him. It turns out that just in the morning, Nathan had reported the strange green light in the sinkhole to his superiors. She wanted to arrange a team to explore it, but the higher-ups thought there was an unknown danger behind the green light. If you want to go in, unless you can prove there's something in the green light, that's when Nathan remembered Gavin's earlier claim that he could see into the green light. So she sent someone to investigate his background and follow Gavin around the clock. And it worked. Nathan soon found a clue. It was Gavin's wife's wedding ring. Because drive, Shen had already identified the ring as being from 10, 0 BS, C, through the carbon element. This is proof that Gavin's wife Eve was transported back in time through the green light. What's more surprising is that the ring was found by Gavin through a vision. This means that Gavin can indeed see the world behind the green light. Then Nathan broke a shocking story. The same day Gavin crashed his plane, not far from him, there was a sinkhole in the desert, and they found the same green light at the bottom of the sinkhole. This instantly reminded Gavin he had seen a flash of green light before the crash. Then he passed out. When he woke up again, he was in the hot sinkhole, and from time to time, Gavin would see visions of the wilderness and the woods. The doctor explained that it was the aftermath of a concussion, but Gavin thought there was something more to it than that. Nathan was convinced of Gavin's story. She thought Gavin was the only one who could see the world behind the green light. It was possible that the crash had somehow connected him to a parallel world. She then leads Gavin to a massive warehouse. There was a strange looking plane. It turns out that when the sinkhole appeared in the desert a few years ago, they started secretly developing a flying machine that could enter the sinkhole. 
Now Gavin's presence is the perfect opportunity. Nathan is going to arrange for Gavin to lead a team into the green light to find out what's going on. This could be the greatest discovery in human history.